appreciate you taking some time today to come uh, set through our little presentation here. And I know our wishes is putting it on. So we're going to go over some things of how to buy a car, maybe what to look for. I don't know how many people in here own cars now or have ever bought a car, went to a dealership to buy a car. We're going to kind of touch base on some of those things and some of the things you want to watch out for. Right. First kind of thing is uh, simplify the buying process. Kind of go through, understand you have to have a budget set. A lot of people go out and buy a car to start off with and they're like, oh my gosh, I fall in love with the car and you can't afford it. Um, that happens a lot more than you think. Uh, evaluate your needs. What are you looking for? You're looking for a four door, two door, four wheel drive, good on gas. There's a lot of different things you need to look for. So kind of have that idea first before you go out. If you have a vehicle now or if you're, you know, if you want to trade a car, do that as well. So a good idea too if you're looking to trade. You know, look up the value first. There's always options of selling it on your on your own, things like that. You want to look at um, where to shop and what to expect with some financing. You know, I just one thing about this is everyone looks at buying a car as this huge process where there's you know smoke and mirrors every, everywhere. Here's the thing: it is actually, if you think about it, it's a simple process. But the most important thing is to do your homework. So if you keep in mind these five things today, and you say, okay, there's five elements that I really gotta keep in mind when I'm buying a car, you know what? All those smoke and mirrors go away, and then you can concentrate on making a good investment on an asset that will actually depreciate for you. So that's the one thing. It's going to be a depreciating asset. So if you get belly up in that asset in the, in the beginning, then subsequent purchases, you're going to have to make up for that per for that initial purchase. Okay. So when we talk about simplifying the process, we're talking about just drilling it down to five things to remember. Okay. Kind of how do we begin the journey? What's the thing we went on this price? Um, first step, trying to get an idea of what you're looking for, how much you want to spend. A great way to do that too is uh, get pre-approved. I don't know if you guys are members of a a credit union, anything like that. You can go get a pre-approval before you go shopping, which is very helpful. Um, so you get an idea of what you can buy, um, what your interest rate is, before you step in there, and they're telling you a lot of different things at some dealerships. So what does that mean, like pre-approval? A pre-approval, what you're going to do is fill out an application. Um, they're going to say, okay, how long have you had a job, what your income is, and then I mean, with elevations here, they would come back to you and say, okay, we'll give you a $12,000 car at 9%. So then you know, hey, when I go out there, I'm not going to look at a $35,000 car. I know I can only afford twelve, dollars and that's what I'm pre-approved for. So it's a good idea to do that before you get in there. Some dealerships that you go out to, they'll be like, oh, geez, you want that $25,000 car? Not a problem. That will get you in there. The next thing you know, your payments are $750 a month. They do get you approved, but you're like, oh my gosh, there's no way I can pay this car. Um, product, once again, evaluate your needs, what you want to do, what you can afford, service. Um, don't overlook that aspect. Of course, you got to understand when you go in somewhere, how they treat you. you know, right? Sucks going in a place and they don't give you good service. Everyone knows that. And then trust. Work with the reputable the dealers. There's some different ways to look at that, and we'll touch base on it here in a little bit. Um, some of the things you want to go through too when you're buying, like you said, are you financing? Um, once again, a pre approval. Okay. Now, if you go out and buy a brand new car, there's an option sometimes of, oh, hey, you can do financing or you can get a rebate through the dealership. What you want to do is you want to break that down and see what's the better option. Um, some will say, hey, we'll give you a $2,000 rebate or 1.9% financing. So that's always a good thing, too, is when you want to look at and see all the options that are out there. What kind of loan you're doing, um, just with how long, how many, how many months, um, once again, what you can afford. Um, what would your interest rate be? Well, when you go into purchase from like a dealership, their main aspect is to sell you the car and make money, but they also try to make money on the rate that they sell you. Go get pre-approved through your credit union. You'll know the rate ahead of time. And going through there, they won't bump that up to try to make you pay more, and they make more off of you. Um, combination of the two, and then what's recommended? Money down is recommended. I mean, at, at any point, I know that sounds hard, but even if you have five hundred dollars down, that helps. I mean, it's going to lower your payments, and it just shows that whoever you're doing financing with, that you are caring about it, and that you're saying, "Hey, I'm going to." For lack of a better, putting a little skin in the game, as they say. Um, hey, I, I'm putting some money up front. But the pre-approval, do they look at that as wrong? Well? They do. A lot of times, what they'll do on a pre-approval is, let's say, prior to say twelve thousand, ninety percent loan to value. They might say, 
what that means is if the car is worth ten thousand, the only finance nine thousand on the car. So you'd have to come up with a thousand dollars now. So they might look at that, or they might, if you have great credit and build up your credit, they might say hey, you don't need any money down. But it always helps you if you can't put money down. Of course, the payment's going to drop as well. I think. You know, one thing is, how many of you guys know what your credit score is? Nice. Okay, so two. <laughs> <laughs> so that is one important aspect of any large purchase that you're going to make. Any time that you're going to go and you're going to say, you know what, I want to buy this, whatever, but I'm going to need a loan on it. One of the first places I recommend, especially as a first-time buyer, is going to your financial institution. Now. We work with credit unions, and you know what, there's whatever your take is on the financial, um, uh, your financial, you know, aspect, understand what their credit um, guidelines are. Because you know what, when you go there, they're going to say, you know what, you're, it's the first time you're buying. So here is your interest rate, because they, you don't have a lot of history. So they're going to they're gonna say, you know what, there's a lot of risk to that. So they're going to bump up your, your interest rate. Then the other thing is they might say, well, do you have a co-signer on that? So if you have a co-signer, they would maybe bring that interest rate down and maybe give you a little more with your loan to value. But you know what? When we talk about what is your first step, that is absolutely your first step. Always go, I think, to your financial institution and say, this is what I'm trying to do. <coughs> All right? Because they can pull your credit report. They will look at your income. They will look at your debt. And they will say, you know what? This is where you're at. And here's the thing. Now, it's a competitive industry. So if you're saying, you know what, I'm not sure I really like that, go to another financial institution. Does that make sense? But in the back of your mind, what you always want to do is make sure that you can afford your payment. Because as Austin's going to explain, you know, you're just not going to pay a monthly payment on the purchase of that car. You've got gas, you've got insurance, you've got maintenance on that car, you've got oil changes, so forth and so on. So, what are the costs and dish prices, like she said? Um, so you're going to buy a car. I'm just saying, so you can pre-approve for twelve thousand. I'm just going to use that as an example. It makes it easy. So there's always going to be taxes. Your annual percentage rate, your interest rate, is added in as well. So if you're paying twelve thousand for a car. You're going to pay interest over, let's say, a five-year loan. Okay, that rolls in. Then your taxes roll in, roughly around eight percent throughout the Denver area, Boulder area. Um, if you get loan insurance like gap insurance. Um, and I don't know if you guys are familiar with that. I'll touch really briefly on that. Um, it just covers the difference if you ever total your car, the difference between what the insurance company will pay you and what you owe on the car. It's a great product. Um, get a warranty on there. And then let's say you don't have to put money down. Let's say you get pre-approved with no money down. Well, on that $12,000 car, after all that gets on, you might owe fifteen five. dollars So understand, as you would say, belly up, you're a little upside down, but you are going to be on any car purchase unless you're putting quite a bit of money down. So you've got to understand that because all those things get pulled into it. You don't have to take a warranty. You don't have to take the loan insurance. You do have to pay the taxes. Um, so that gets rolled in. Okay. Um, insurance, definitely check on that. Um, and you know, I get kids coming in all the time and saying, hey, I want a WRX STI. Great. Well, you're paying your insurance is going to be twice as much as you're paying. Um, gas mileage, of course. FuelEconomy.gov is a great place to look. It'll give you all the gas mileage for every vehicle out there. So write that one down. That's a good one. Um, but if you want great gas mileage and you travel a long ways to, to work, probably don't want a V8, you know, something like that. Just take a understand what you're doing. The scheduled maintenance, oil changes, tune-ups, air filters, etc., and replacement parts. Okay, cars break down. There's no doubt about it. There's no car that doesn't. And once again, kind of just to recap what I went over, all the prices, and I think we have some handouts too to kind of go over that. Purchase price and your financing costs, sales and tax, kind of break down everything to understand, hey, I'm not just paying $350 a month for this car. Understand it might be $650 a month is what it's going to cost me with everything. And I give you an idea too, guys. Um, I always say $20 per thousand when you're looking at a vehicle. So it gives you an idea if you're looking at a what a $15,000 car, you're looking at $300 a month. It gives you a good idea. Uh, that doesn't always play out. Sometimes it's a little less. Sometimes it's a little more based on your credit score and your interest rate you're paying. This is kind of just an idea of a 2012 Malibu. Breaks down MSRP member price is what we would offer to our members, which is a credit union member. Rebates, $3,250. Breaks down $18,364. So on this car, at 5.59%, $352 a month. 
This one broke down to roughly almost $17 per thousand. $20 is a good number. So if you're out there looking and you're like, I want a payment of 300 a month, 15,000 or under is your car. What are your needs? We kind of touched on this again. Um, gas mileage, seating capacity, uh, two or four door, four wheel drive SUV. There's a lot of those up here. <laughs> we sell a lot of them too. And uh, cargo room, that's another thing too. And the number one thing I always get is someone buys a car and they start a family. And then they come in in two years and say, hey, I need a bigger car, I'm running out of room here. Well, and it matters, once again, how much they put down, if they put any money down. When you're trading in a car, you can be upside down. You gotta understand that when you don't put money down. Um, the car isn't worth as much as it was two years ago, or it might have depreciated more than others. So, take that into consideration. When you can put any amount of money down, that helps you. Trading, okay, this is what I was gonna, I talked about earlier. Who owns a car here? Awesome, so we've got some. If you're looking to trade it in, there's two different ways to do it. And it matters if you owe money on it. If you don't owe money on it, you can sell it outright. Craigslist is a big thing everywhere. You know, you can sell it outright. Um, you can trade it in, okay? You trade in a value, sometimes, well, all the time, will save you on one way. If you trade in a car worth $1,000, let's say, you don't have to pay for taxes on that first $1,000 of your new purchase. So there's a little bit of a tax credit when you do a trade. So if you're sitting there and your car's worth $8,000 and you're trying to sell it and someone offers you $8,000 and you're like, oh, I really want $8,500, I'm gonna sell it outright, but your tax rate's 8%, you're really getting $8,640. So you're really getting more by trading it in than you would be selling it outright. You get a tax credit for whatever amount you trade that car in for. Okay, so that's always a good way to think of it too. Um, Negative equity, we've kind of hit on that, so find a man. What's hot? What's not? Gas prices are what now? Four bucks? If you come in with a big suburban, it's not as worth as much right now as it might be in the middle of the wintertime. When someone needs it, because right now everyone's like, ooh, I don't need a suburban. Can't pay for the gas. So you gotta take that into consideration too when you're buying a your car. Um, gas prices now are, like I said, four bucks. A little parole is, we've seen that price jump up quite a bit over the last three months. Because we can't buy them for the same price we used to because everyone wants it. Because everyone's like, oh my gosh, I'm scared of gas, I want a good gas mileage. So here. Okay. Places you can shop. Of course, there's private parties. If you go out there on Craigslist, is the number one, that's the one I'm using, you find a car. And you're like, oh, this is great. This is $1,000 less than any other dealer that I find it at. This is great. A lot of times there's a reason. If not, sometimes you get a great deal. That's what it is. But I always would tell someone though, is get an inspection on it. Just take it to a mechanic. It might cost 150 bucks. Do it for your own good. Because there is something wrong with it. Of course, that's why a person wants to sell it. A lot of people don't sell their car when they're like, oh, this thing's running great. So they're selling it because usually there's something wrong with it, or it needs tires, and they don't want to pay the $800 for it. So look into that, too, when you're looking at a car. Um, dealerships, of course, that's the person you walk in the front door. Well, you don't really get out of your car. They're at your car when you open the door, and they're ready to sell you a car. Um, sometimes high pressure, they were straight on commission. So what their goal is, is to sell you a car at the highest price, because so that's how they make their money. Okay. They don't care what car it is. They're like, oh, you say you want a four-wheel drive? Well, great, I have a two-door sport car over here that I think you look great in, because I know I'm going to make a lot of money on it. So that's what you kind of go. And then there's the, the buyer or auto buying service like myself. I don't get paid on commission. I get paid on unit count. So if you told me I want a four-wheel drive, that's what I'm going to show you. And it doesn't matter to me which one you buy, or if there's one on my lot, or I bring it in from somewhere else. So think of that too, if you, if you want to come to a place and don't get pressured like crazy, well, sometimes that's the way to go. Okay. New, new versus used, all right? Good question earlier. Some cars will drop dramatically. Drop, you know, if you buy a brand new Escalade, let's say, $70,000. In a year and a half, it's worth thirty five. Probably right in that range, okay? Now you buy a brand new Corolla, I'm going to use that as an example. I sold a brand new Corolla at that 0% for 18300 Okay, You go out there to buy a year and a half old one with 35,000 miles on it, and they're 17000 Okay, So you're like, wow, $1,300 more I can buy a brand new one at 0%. So it's sometimes a better way to go. So understand that when you're going out there to look at cars, if you're looking only a few years old, there's some cars that you can just get into a new one for $20 more a month, $30 more a month, and you get full factory warranty, everything rolls in. 
So think of that. Um, what is your rate? That's a question that we ask when you go get pre-approved. You know that rate up front. That can change a little bit when you go to buy a car, depending on how much money you're putting down, what they're selling the car for, and the year of it. Rate participation is what I was saying earlier. You go to a dealer, and maybe you get approved through their system at 5%. They're like, I'm going to sell it to them for 7.5. Because they make money. So understand, that's a great reason of getting pre-approved first. You kind of know what interest rate you're going in at. You know, and I know everyone gets excited when they go look at a car. They're like, oh, I want it. That's what I want to do, period. Um, so hey, oh, you're telling me 9%. Payments are 380 a month. I can do it. I can make it work. Well, it's not that you can't make it work. It shouldn't be that much. You, know, you go to a place that tells you that up front, you know, get, get pre-approved. You don't have to pay that much, you know, even though you can't. Um, oh, one point to that though. Okay, so say you bought a car, you fell in love with it, lost your mind, and then you drove it off. Because here's the thing, Colorado is a, uh, what is it, right of rescission? There's no right of rescission, right? So you, once you sign it, it's yours. One thing you can do is you go, okay, wait a minute, this is a, you know, a 9.4 rate. I actually went to my credit union, you know, two days later, and I found out I could do a 7.4 rate or, you know, a little lower. It's worth talking about them to refinance. Now, you know, but do it pretty quickly because as uh, um, Austin mentioned, rate participation is when the dealer marks up your rate, the bank says, that's fine, I'm gonna pay you a portion, you dealer, because I'm making extra interest income on that loan. Does that make sense? But if you do it within 90 days, then you know what, that lender will go and they'll take that money back. This is an awful practice in this industry, I believe. So you know what, the sooner you find out, okay, wait a minute, my rate was wrong, you can rectify that Rectify that by going to another money institution. Most of them will have you make a first payment, so you usually can't do it within the first 30 days. I went to a Nissan dealership, that's what, they're like, oh, and then for $800, we'll add in power locks and power windows. Oh, sure, yeah. And I mean, doesn't every car come with that? Oh, well, yeah, you'd be surprised. <laughs> so, no. I mean, even that in the sunroof, you know, is another 800 Oh, yeah, they keep adding that on. But when, what they'll do there is, is most dealerships will advertise their lowest price. And what that is, roll of windows, manual transmission, and then, like, oh, man, I can get in that car for 15000 brand new car. Awesome. Well, then... They have one of those. And then they're like, oh, well, you don't want that? Oh, so here's what you do. And here's what's going to cost. Yeah, so be, be leery of that. Okay. And always a dealer's reputation, too. Um, there's a place on here called dealerator.com. You can go on there. You guys want to write that down. And it goes over. Actually, individuals get to go on there and say, hey, this is my experience with this dealer. Always been so fun. Finding the right vehicle. That's another thing I'm going to touch base is skipping there. Always ask for a Carfax. Okay, I know you see the commercials, Carfax, whatever. Just ask for one. If they say they can't give you one, don't buy the car. There's no need to buy the car without one. It takes me two clicks of a button to have one pulled right up and turn it off. So it's not hard to get. Um, if someone. What is that? Uh, oh, a Carfax is the whole history on a car. So it goes by a VIN number. If it's ever been in a wreck, Anything that's been done by insurance or police? What about like maintenance? Maintenance, a lot of times, we'll pull it too if they go to that dealer. So let's say if you have a Honda and you go to a Honda dealer, a lot of times that dealer will put it on. So you get to see all of that. But it just gives you a whole history. It's like your credit report. Credit report for a car. Yeah, so um, if they can't give you one, don't buy a car. That's the best advice I can give you. Um, that's right, worksheet. This is kind of just for your own ideas. I know a lot of people that I work with come and drive five, six cars because they don't really know what they want. They're driving different cars and they're like, oh, please, do I want, you know, this car, whatever. And this is kind of just a little checklist to keep you on point of knowing, hey, I like that car. That was five cars ago. I remember I liked it um, compared to others. So it's just more of anything for yourself to kind of tap into. Um, and then there's one here that gives you a lot more um, things to do. So different things, of course, will probably rank higher on this. Cargo area could be one of your number ones. Okay, Tires and brakes, if you hit the brakes and it squeals so loud you can't hear the radio, something's wrong. Yeah, it's just not dust. Um, but some people will say sound systems. Don't always turn on the radio, always try the CD player. It's always a helpful thing. A lot of people never do that. And then they get home and their car, their radio is You know, that sucks. 
Yeah. <laughs> um, so check all those things out when you're driving a car. I know you get excited. Everyone does. I do. And I run cars all day. Um, try the driver's seat. Try everything. Make sure you try everything in the car when you're buying it. All right? Yeah. Um, watch out for sales schemes. We were talking about maybe there's someone goes, oh, yeah, that trade-in that someone said I'll give you $200 for, I'll give you 3500 for it. They're charging it more on the car you're buying. If you said, oh, you're going to give me 3500 awesome, cut me a check. So they're like, oh, no, you have to buy one of our cars. They're making the money somewhere, guys. It's, it's somewhere. Um, and that's always a good, I always say that to other people, too. Well, this dealer says, <coughs> Eight hundred dollars more on that trip. Well, great. Go over there and ask for a check. Is it is it really you get for your car when you expect it to get as a trade value? Yeah, that's hard. Everyone uses Bluebook. Actually, in Colorado, it's NADA. So if you guys want to write to NADA.com, that's what all the credit unions will use to look at the value of vehicles. Okay. Um, it matters right now. I mean, if you have a, a I, I'm going to use a Corolla again. If you have like a three-year-old Corolla with only twenty-three thousand miles. You're going to definitely get more than what that trade-in value is because it's premium, all right? If you own a Suburban right now and it shows, oh, it's worth 18000 you might get fifteen because, if, let's say I give you fifteen for it, I've still got to sell it and no one wants it. So it's like, oh, it's a tough place. It's a good way to look at it. When you look at the retail value, when you pull up an ADA or even Blue Book, you'll see it. Retail value. That is what the credit unions base the loan on. So when I'm saying 90% loan to value, 100% loan to value, they say retail value is what they base that on. Um, so review overall, guys. Do your homework. Know what you're wanting to do. Know what you're getting. Be educated before you go out because it is emotional. I know that. Um, when you go out there, everyone's bought something that they're like, they get home like, oh my God, what did I just do? Everyone's not. So <laughs> be prepared for that because you're going to find a car you love. There's no doubt that they're out there. Um, <coughs> Are you trading it in? Make sure you kind of know an ADA. Kind of get an idea of what your car's worth. If it's worth 8000 and they say, hey, we'll give you two, whoa, what's wrong? You know? um, where to shop? Go with the uh, overall dealer rater. That's a great place. And then check the paperwork for extra fees. Check this out. We greatly appreciate it. I appreciate your guys' time. I know we're running slow over the late here. So thank you. Thank you guys.